am so happy to see all of you this morning, and it's such a great honor to address our congregation this morning. Amen. The message I bring you is God will take care of you. Amen. And it's based on Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. And I would like to start by telling you a true story. <laughs> Five years ago, on a very hot summer morning, Raul found a tiny little bird on the asphalt while he was running in the neighborhood. So very carefully, Raul put the bird under the shade on the grass where it was much cooler. And he was hoping its parents will come and get it. Later on, Raul, Mary, and I went to see the bird. We could not put it back in its nest because it was very high up on a tall tree. We noticed the bird was weak, and although it tried to move its wings, but it was very weak. So we brought it home, and very carefully we gave it water. It helped him a whole lot, or her. And we learned how to give them baby bird food. <laughs> and uh, in a matter of days, it recovered quite, quite well. And from one day to the next, the bird grew and grew. It was very alert, very intelligent little animal. It started recognizing Mary's voice and my voice, and it demanded food. <laughs> yes. And I could tell how comfortable and how safe this little bird felt with us. It would even fall asleep in the palm of our hands. It started flying. Its favorite place to fly was Raul's head <laughs> because he was the tallest in the house. And one day, as it started flying in the backyard, its family came to get it from our backyard. And by that time, we realized it was a female robin. God has given us human being, the responsibility to care for his creation. We are going to go for a moment to Genesis chapter 2, verses 19 to 20, and we will see that since Adam, we received this responsibility. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was his name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. In order for Adam to give names to all these animals, he must have spent time with each of them, understand their characteristics, understand even their purpose to name them. Animals have a very special place in the heart of God. Yes, God loves all his creation. Amen? Amen? It's amazing to consider that God provides food and water and the perfect environment for each creature that he has created. We can see that in Psalm 104. I'm just going to read a few verses, verses 10 to 14 and verses 16 to 17. 
17. God makes springs pour water into the valleys. It flows between the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the sky nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. God waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of God's work. God makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests. The stork has its home in the junipers. Psalm 104 continues talking about God's provision for other animals. Also talks about the environment that he prepared for them. There are several scriptures that speak about animals and the loving care that God provides for them. And sometimes his loving care is through people. Also, there is a scripture that speaks about the mistreatment of animals and the abuse of animals. Proverbs 12.10 says, A righteous man regards the life of his animal, but the tender mercies of the wicked are only cruelty. And that's according to the Berean Standard Bible <coughs> version, which helped us understand a little better what God is trying to tell us. My brothers, my sisters, why is a little bird important to us? Why would a little bird matter to us? A little bird like this one does not provide us food like chicken or turkey. <laughs> a little bird like this does not provide any benefit, not even like the silk one. A little bird that's like this does not even provide honey like the bee or wool like the sheep. Birds do not harvest. They don't store food. There are wise animals that do, like the ants and squirrels. They store food for the winter. Is there anything we can learn from this little bird. My brothers, my sisters, a little bird like this has a great spiritual lesson to teach us. This bird totally depends on God for every meal. This little bird totally depends on God for the rest of its life. This little bird does not complain. This little bird does not get anxious as winter approaches. It doesn't care about tomorrow. This little bird trusts God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Matthew 6.26 Is Jesus talking to his disciples? Is Jesus talking to us today? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than 
and they, yes, praise the Lord. Jesus Christ insisted many times that his disciples would not be scared or worried. The Bible has many scriptures that reminds us that we should not worry about anything. God wants you to know, my brother, my sister, that you can trust him. We have to learn to live every day trusting God. I'm going to say it again. I'm speaking to Christian believers. We have to learn to live trusting God every day of our life. Amen. There is a remedy for anxiety. There is an antidote when you worry about tomorrow. Trust God. Trust Jesus. How many of you say amen? amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I would encourage you this morning to believe in the God of creation and trust him. Believe in the God of Israel that delivered them so many times from so many attacks, from so many enemies, and the nation of Israel still stands. Trust in the God of Israel. Believe in the God of mercy and love that sent his son Jesus Christ to save you and to save me. Trust this loving God. Believe in God that has allowed you to be here this morning and to listen to this message. Trust God. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, trust the word of God because it is true. My brothers, my sisters, and my friends, in today's society, it's very difficult to trust God. It's the hardest lesson to learn to trust God. We trust in our own means. We trust in our own strength. What does media tell, tells us constantly? Believe in yourself. Trust in yourself. Believe that you can do it. Whatever you set your mind to, you will do it. You can accomplish it. But what happens when we have no means and we have no strength left? Also, we trust doctors and medicine with all its technology and advancement. And yes, I'm thankful to medicine and doctors, but they also have its limitations. They can only go so far, and God has the final word. We trust scientists, we trust financial analysts, and other forms of human wisdom. But they also have great limitations. We also trust in technology and all the amazing advancements that we as a race are making in so many fields. I can go on and on. We also trust money. And I have experienced that it's very easy to trust God when there's money in my pocket. <laughs> and there is money 
in my bank account. Question. Would you still trust God if you don't have anything? Praise God. Praise God for those that say amen. My brothers, my sisters, Jesus Christ chose a little bird. Jesus Christ chose little birds to teach his disciples to trust God. He did not use wise people and the technology and the doctors and all the human knowledge. He pointed to a little bird to teach them to trust God. Jesus gave his disciples the example of a little bird that doesn't benefit us. We may even consider a little bird insignificant. But what a great lesson we can learn from a little bird that doesn't even think or reason like we do. My dear sisters, my dear brothers, a little bird trusts God for everything. And by what I have observed, I can tell you one thing. God does not fail. My dear sisters, you are a whole lot more precious to God than this little bird. Yes, God provides for it, and God will surely provide for you too. My brothers, you are a whole lot more valuable than this little bird. God provides for it, and he will certainly provide for you too. You have the faculty, you have the ability to talk to God and to ask him everything that you need. What is your need today? What is your need before the Lord? I can tell you this morning. Trust God. Present Him with your needs. There is only one condition. Trust completely in God. Trust Him. As your trust in God grows, your relationship with our Savior will become stronger. To trust in God, you also have to know the Word of God. Read your Bible. Read about the amazing things that God has done for humanity, for the people of Israel, including a tiny little bird, as we saw today. If you have constant fellowship with our amazing God, you will then start asking according to his perfect will. And your confidence in what you're asking will grow. You will ask even with more confidence. My brothers, my sisters, my friends, trust God. Trust Jesus. Trust God, the creator of the universe. Trust God, the God of power and might. Trust God, the faithful God of Israel. Trust God, the loving Father who has provided a Savior, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Trust God with faith and confidence 
once again. God will take care of you. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, you're my daddy. I know you, God. I know you, and because I know you, I trust you. Lord, I know your word. I know the, the word of God. I have read it so many times. And in every story that I read, I have learned to trust in you. Lord, as I am knowing you more and more, my confidence in you is growing that you can do great and amazing things on my behalf and on behalf of my brothers and my sisters and even for people that don't know you. Heavenly Father, as we're learning this morning that you will take care of us, I pray, Lord, that you take care of every need this morning among your people. That you take care of the needs of their loved ones, family, friends, neighbors, co-workers. That you take care of the needs of people that don't know you yet. Father, as this world is going through so many difficult situations, I pray that you take care of the needs of the people in Ukraine, in Turkey, and in Syria. Heavenly Father, we know your power is great. I pray that you take care of our physical needs, that you take care of our emotional needs, our mental needs, and our spiritual needs above all else. Heavenly Father, we trust you. You are a loving God, a powerful God. And today, we want to say, Lord, we trust you. We believe in you. And we leave this church this morning with that confidence that we are approaching a mighty God. And as you consider the needs of your people this morning, I pray, Lord, take care of their needs. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen.